About 10 years ago, I bought a Cool Runner 2 development platform that was then sold by a company named Digiland. The kit was very interesting and had several advantages, including the price. Inside box, one can find the Xilinx CPLD based development platform. Um, this platform was built around the Cool Runner 2 CPLD. This board also included a 7 segment display, some switches, and push buttons. This development board was programmed through the USB port using a software developed by Digiland. In addition to the development board, it also had an LCD display and mini USB to USB cable and some CDs. One of the CDs included in the package has the board's programming software developed by Digiland. This software allowed the transfer of the GAD file to the development board using the USB interface. The other CD included was Xilinx IZE development environment, in this case version 10.1. Using this software, the user could create a logical device using VHDL, Verilog, or a more graphical approach using schematics. Regardless of the tool used, after compiling, a JET file was created and then could be uploaded to the platform using the software provided on the previous CD. All those pieces integrated very well during the time where Windows XP was the main operating system around. However, the Digilent software fails to run after other versions of the operating system, such as Windows 7, 8 and so on. Digilent has never upgraded its software, so uh, for newer versions of the operating system it was impossible to upload the program to the development board. So the only way now is to program it via the JTAG part. However, purchasing a Digiland or Xilinx uh, cable is very expensive, so I have uh, decided to bought one from uh, China. The kit includes the programmer, uh, as you can see, it's uh, similar to the Xilinx. Also, a set of cables that you can use to, to adapt to your uh, board. A cable to connect the programmer to the USB computer port and the CD with some instructions and I will take you now to inside the CD contents okay so let's check the content of the CD as you can see I have two folders one is IZE is only the impact tool from Xilinx Okay, so in root another folder and a file. So let's check the file. So it seems to be some installation instructions, but in uh, in Chinese. Good luck to decode that. So it seems to be how to use the cable with the impact tool let's see the second folder it seems to be some kind of of instructions installations to be used in windows 7 and other operating systems Okay, so it's just the original documentation from Xilinx is some instructions to install the Xilinx IZ. Okay, more Xilinx original documentation, so nothing handy. So those are all the files that uh, are included in the CD. I translated some of the beginning of this document. So it says something like um, to install IZ 40.2 or above. 
He says that after installing the IZE software, you must plug the Xilinx cable driver and and the driver it seems that the driver will be automatically installed without any intervention okay so let's let's try to do it so let's see what happens when I connect the program cable into my USB port okay so let's see the devices Okay, so so it appears as a USB serial converter. Let's install the software. Okay, so let's start to install the Xilinx IZ software. So now the Xilinx new software is called Vivado, but Vivado does not support CPLDs. So we must download older versions of Xilinx software. In this case, we must download the IZ package. So you must come to support, and you have here download and licensing, and in the archive you have the IZ archive okay you must use some version that supports the cool runner 2 because not all the versions will support the same hardware if you go to the download page you can see that you have several versions of IZ so the la last the later ones are uh, 40.7 for Windows 10 we will not install this one because the, these versions of, uh, of IZ runs over a virtual machine and I believe that the later version that runs in Windows is the 14.5 version okay so let's download it full installer for Windows you must have an account if you do not have an account you must create an account Okay, so let's begin by installing the software. So the software installation is ended. It asks us to remove the cable. This is the license. So we need to run a batch program. Settings 64 is a 64 bits my operating system. And now let's see okay so let's check if everything was installed correctly so we will try to to make a simple program where a push button will control the state of an LED so let's assume that the push button number zero will will control the state of LED number zero okay so here I have a, a schematic of the inputs and outputs connected to each of the pins of the CPLD okay so let's begin our project let's begin by creating a new project okay let me change the, the folder let's name it as for example as an example one okay so we have a cool runner 2 let's search for it Cool Runner 2. The device is, is this one, so 2C256. 
we have a GQ144 package, it's ok. Let's add a new source, for example it's a VHDL module, example 1 module. So let's assume we have only one input, X, and one output is Y. So the input will be associated to the push button and the output associated to the LED. Our program will be very easy, just something like that. Okay. Now we will add some user constraints. This will enable us to uh, choose the, the pins for the input and for the output. As we have seen, the LED must be connected to the pin 69, so... Okay, and uh, the input will be 143, so... Okay, so we can see here, the input X and the output Y. Ok, so let's save it. Ok. And now let's run the implement design. Ok, so this is the final report in HTML. So only one macro cell from a possible of 256 is used. Ok, so one input, one output. Now we must upload to the cool runner. So let's go and configure the target device. So let me plug <coughs> the platform cable. Okay, it's on. Okay, so it was successfully identified. As you can see, now we must connect the programmer to our cool runner board. So let's do it. So we have here our programmer. It's hard to see, but uh, the, there is a red LED light on at the moment. Okay, so we have here the pinout of our device. We need the cool runner board. We will also need the cable to connect the programmer to the board. I will use this one. And uh, we need also to connect our board to the supply voltage. In this case, we will supply it through the USB port. So let's connect our device. You have a small square at the top that you must align with this opening in the in the in the connect. Now the JTAG connector in the board is in those pins. So we have six pins. Those pins are numbered, begins by VCC, ground, and then the other um, JTAG signals. Okay, so we must connect it in the order of having VCC and ground and the other signals in the same sequence. Okay, so there is one wire that is not connected to the header, so no problem. Then we will connect our board. The LED went from red to green, now it's green. We have our device already supplied, so let's upload our program and, let, and let's test it, ok? Let's initialize the chain. Ok, let's say yes. No, it's crashed. Ok, let's test again. Let's rerun it. Ok, 
okay let's open impact okay let's do it again so initialize the chain okay yeah Mm. Well, it, it keeps crashing. Okay, let's initialize the chain. Okay. Yes. Not again. It keeps crashing. Okay, I will try to check what's happened in the internet. I have found this uh, this web page so it's from the dev blog so they tell us that they have some kind of work around so let's try to see if, if this will fix the problem first we will open this directory and then find this file and rename it okay so let's see okay this is the file so let's rename it rename it okay so this one is bypassed and a, a copy of this one is made and renamed so now we must copy this one, control C, common lib for So this is a workaround for Windows 8, so let's expect that it works for Windows 10. I don't know. Okay, so let's try it. Okay, so let's open again Impact. Seems okay. okay yeah it works okay let's program it okay okay so finally let's check if everything is working in the hardware okay so this is the push button this is the LED this push button is located at pin 143 and this LED is pin 69 so let me see if I can put it to work yeah okay so it behaves as required so I hope this video will be of any help for you, so take care.